This is a, a memoir, of course, that Herbert Hoover wrote in his later years, uh, primarily about his family life, his benefactions, and what he called his crusade against collectivism as an ex-president. I think one of the most interesting features of the book is his uh, account, which we don't often get from him, of his family life, his private life, uh, in this case, as an ex-president. And it's a, it was a different world back in the 30s. He left office in 1933, went back to California to live, was based in Palo Alto for a while. But he ranged around the country on fishing trips, uh, driving in the West. He'd pick up hitchhikers sometimes. He had no Secret Service protection. That wasn't provided uh, by the government in those days for ex-presidents. And uh, he would pick up uh, people and give them a, a lift and so forth. And uh, sometimes he had amusing experiences, some of which he tells in the early pages of this book. So we see Hoover, so to speak, <clears throat> pardon me, at, at peace as well as at ideological war, fighting the fight against collectivism and criticizing the New Deal in, in, in his public roles. Uh, there are a couple of episodes that uh, on the road uh, for Hoover that I found amusing. He discusses them in, in this uh, volume. Uh, in one of them, uh, the uh, police siren uh, starts sounding as he's driving along at a pretty good clip uh, somewhere in California. And he's worried because, uh-oh, publicity. I'll be dragged into uh, you know, traffic court and have to uh, be subject to publicity. Former president breaks the law. And instead, the policeman said, uh, I've been trying to shake your hand for 15 years, if you don't mind. <laughs> and Hoover said, said he was so elated that he happily did it. Uh, but the other time was a little more dramatic. Uh, Hoover and his son, one of his sons, were taking turns driving home, I guess, through the night in the Central Valley uh, of California. That's where they were at the time. And um, it got to be about four in the morning and Hoover came up to a quiet little town and he saw the lights were out, so he didn't slow down. Well, the siren starts to ring and the lights and so forth go off and Hoover is stopped again for speeding. And this time the uh, policeman wanted to look at his license, so Hoover hands it to him, and the policeman looks at it and says, are you that guy? And Hoover says, I am that guy. And the policeman says, well, do you take a special joy in driving at 60 miles per hour at 4 o'clock in the morning? <laughs> and Hoover says, I do. Whereupon the policeman says, pass on, brother, but look out for my mate. He is camped this side of King City. So Hoover was able to get away again. Well, these are little vignettes that, that help, I think, you might say, to humanize him, to show him in a less than formal public role. And the early chapters are devoted to some of that and to his recreations, his great passion for fishing, for example, his membership in the Bohemian Club and annual visits to the Bohemian Grove north of San Francisco. So the early part is devoted to glimpses of him that he ordinarily didn't discuss very much in public. So I think that's one contribution, this memoir of his, this lost memoir that only recently was published, uh, that's one, one contribution it makes, as well as adding to the, the story of Hoover's public uh, career at the same time.